How did scrimmage number two go? You know what, it, uh, it started off the opposite of scrimmage number one with the defense coming out and uh, playing, you know, pretty solid defense there for the first four drives and the offense really made some adjustments to some of the things the defense came in that scrimmage with and um, it ended up flipping pretty quick. So it was, it was good to see that the offense stayed with it, made some in-game adjustments and hit some explosive plays, um, rattled off a, a 75 yard run, you know, for a touchdown and it was back and forth from there. So it was really good to see that um, not only did the defense respond and how they started the scrimmage, and, but uh, more importantly, how the offense then responded within the scrimmage. And, um, it was good to see again that, you know, there was over 11 guys with at least two receptions on the offense. Um, you know, the, the run game was solid. It was, uh, there, was, there was a couple explosive runs, but overall um, the offense ran the ball for, you know, 3.8 a rush. So there was improvement there um, from last week for the defense. But, but the offense had a lot more explosive plays through the pass game. Are you, as a head coach, do you like to see it go back and forth? I know when you were defensive coordinator, you wanted to see your defense. But as the guy that's sitting sort of in the middle, does it please you when you see both sides have some good plays? Oh, it's awesome. That's the best thing. It's, it's great to see. As we started moving through the scrimmage there in the first couple drives, and, and the defense was pretty stingy, uh, what I wanted to see the most was, come on, boys, let's respond from the offense side. What adjustments are we going to make off of the things that the defense was doing differently, and they did, and it was awesome to see. It was great to see, uh, you know, guys like Eric McAllister step up and make some big time plays. He had some explosive catches in the pass game. Um, so, you know, it was, uh, you know, George had a long run in the scrimmage to help get things going as well. So it was good to see uh, those things happen. You mentioned last week that this week was going to be a separator week. Uh, who separated themselves this week? Well, I think overall from a roster standpoint, um, you know, Ty Jones getting back in there and really going full go this week. It, it, looks, uh, it looks a little different when Ty Jones is in there. Um, and so now guys are really able to hone in at, at the positions moving forward for the season. Um, so it was really good to see him in there. George Tarlis is doing a great job at the field side and the spot that he's been uh, uh, competing for. Um, so we've, we've uh, liked the progress there. DJ Schrantz has been doing an awesome job at Will Linebacker as well. Um, and, you know, Markell coming off his, his injury from last year, uh, he's done a nice job. We just want to see him be more consistent. And obviously, that's going to come with more reps, being that he hasn't played a lot of ball since, you know, last fall. You've mentioned Schramm both both times after these scrimmages, and I think a lot of people just assumed when you moved Isaiah there, it was just going to be Isaiah's job. I mean, is, is DJ doing pushing to, for that starting mm -hmm. spot right now? I mean, I don't think anybody shows up and assumes that it's uh, a job's theirs. They got to work for well, it. Well, fans yeah. and stuff. I mean. um, but DJ's done a really good job, so um, you know we'll keep moving those guys and repping them in there to see uh, what the what the best lineup is. You mentioned those explosive runs today. Uh, what was allowing those to happen? Was it the line making a great block? Was it just a, a back making a great play? Uh, you know, one, one in particular that went for 75 yards, it was the whole offense. There was wide receivers involved in the, in the blocking scheme. And they, um, you know, they actually did a really good job to spring George. And, uh, you know, they weren't going to catch George when he got in the open field. So it was, it was George that had the, the long run? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, Andy, you know, after, after the scrimmage, I mean, Touch on a little bit, but your, your overall feeling. I mean, you guys at, are you guys where you need to be at, the, at this time in the fall camp? Yeah, we're really excited about where we're at right now. I mean, today's scrimmage was um, in duration and time was a, about the same length of what a game is, the average game. Um, from a rep standpoint, um, the Blues got reps that would take them right there into the, the rep count and was right there of what it would be in the beginning of the fourth quarter on average. Um, so it was really good being that the guys uh, got great working, situational work, improved in different areas. And again, as a team, if we're going to improve, it is going to go back and forth. Otherwise, one side's getting better and the other one isn't um, by the nature of it. So it was good to see it go back and forth today. It was good to see the guys grind through it, you know, out there in the, uh, in the heat and the, the hottest part of the day. So it was a uh, you know, it was a really good scrimmage. I know you're probably not going to tell us, but I mean, for, for you guys internally, when's the depth chart set? When do you guys now have to make some of these calls? You're right. You know, here soon. When you look at this year's team, 
versus last year's team two weeks out. How much deeper do you think you are? How much do you think yeah. you have as far as bodies that you'd be willing to put in at key times in the and game? That, and that's why we've been able to practice the way we have and, and build that depth to get the reps, you know, because of the way we've been able to recruit and develop this team this year. And, um, you know, to your question, there's plenty of guys that are, there's two guys that can be the ones. And I know there's only 11 that get to step on the field at one time, but the benefit of the way these guys have been training and preparing is we have multiple guys, you know, at almost every single position that can jump in there and it doesn't fall off very much. And in a lot of cases, it doesn't fall off at, a, a, you know, at all. You mentioned um, explosive plays in the past game. I hate to bring up his name again, but Khalil was explosive after the catch. Or were, were guys explosive after the catch? Was it guys going over the it top? It was a combination. Yeah, Jay, it was a combination today. There were some shots today, um, some vertical routes, some really good catches. You know, Cole Wright showed up today, had a one-handed catch down the sideline. Um, like I said, Emac had a couple, and then there were, you know, a couple catches, and then and then some uh, um, yak after, you know. So it was good to see it was happening in multiple ways. The running backs caught the ball out of the backfield in some certain situations, too, and, and did some really good things with the ball. And Caden Dudley showed up today out of the backfield as well. He put his pads down on one of the DBs and uh, did some really good things in the run game. So we're excited. That's why we, you give guys opportunities, and they've been working really, really hard to make the most of them. It sounds like the running game is kind of clicking this so far this fall. Outside of the obvious, a healthy George Helani, what's been the difference from your point, from your perspective? I think it's, it's the whole offense. Again, today on the long run, the wide receivers were as much to do with it as the offensive line was. Um, give George a hole like that and it's uh, you know it's not it does George creates a lot on his own and there's not a lot there let alone if you give him some space so uh, I think the coming into this obviously um, we felt good about the guys we had in place in the backfield but we needed to see them do it you know and we've been able to see that with George with Ashton with T. Crow um, Kaden Dudley has obviously showed up you know and Elion has been a great addition as well so KB's been doing a good job with those guys, and obviously, you know, they've got to have that offensive line clicking on all cylinders, and uh, those guys, those guys have been doing a tremendous job. I mean, the, the practices, and especially in the rundown situations, it, it has been extremely physical. With, I guess, technically fall camp's ending, right, with school right. starting, I guess. I mean, is this kind of the time you set the depth chart, you flip to Oregon State? I mean, is this kind of that transition period these next couple days, or? Yeah, we flip, you know, we flip and uh, move on to more opponent scout stuff, but there are still things that we need to work on coming out of camp that um, we want to continue to bank reps on. So um, the depth chart, uh, to answer your question, is always, guys are always competing. Every single day, the guys aren't just going to show up here and think, well, I'm the guy. I don't. It's competition every day. How about the competition at the back of quarterbacks by now? Those guys look good. Yeah. So those guys, uh, uh, both those guys did some really good things. Uh, um, again, that's the group that Eric McAllister was in with. Mm -hmm. And he caught some deep balls there. So they, they connected down the field. It's just the consistency for them and, and taking what um, the defense gives them. And, you know, if there's not anything there for them, then move on to the next play. But the strides we've seen from both uh, Taylor and Sam have been huge, both in the run game and in the pass game. And those guys have a lot on them. So really for them, it's going to be the continuation of how they continue on here through the next week with the opponent scout reps and how they handle their, their preparation. Because that's a huge thing at quarterback, too, that's defining that is quite different than it is in fall camp how you handle your, your preparation for an opponent and get yourself prepared to handle those reps as a backup because everybody knows the backup doesn't get it, you yeah. know, that many reps. Uh, I feel like you've covered for this program for a while now. And during, during fall camp, there are good days and there are bad days. But I got to say, I don't feel like we've really heard about any bad days. I mean, how, how consistent have, have the guys been? Or, or maybe you know, been well, I I'll say there's, there's, there's been – maybe one or two days where we weren't starting the way it had looked and the guy snapped out of it and got going and that is way different and it didn't take much through the coaches and the leadership and guys going and then boom we were right back in and that's what it's going to take you know what um, teams that are consistent and do great things and have talent that talent then shines but 
talent's talent. If you don't work every single day, you're not going to meet the expectations that uh, you're capable of. Was that the case last year? I mean, could, could the guys, if the practice started slow, would they have snapped out of it as quickly you know, as, they, as they are right now? I mean, we talk about rebuilding the foundation and stuff. Is, how, how happy are you to see stuff like that? There is a tremendous improvement just so with the overall consistency with how they work. Um, and they know that, and they take great pride in that now. They take pride in that. They take, last year, we didn't know to what extent that needed to be. They know now, and they take pride in meeting that standard every day because they know there's a lot of other teams out there working. Hey, so, hey, hey.